let that rest. I hear Dorset has fled to Richmond. My lord, the promise of the earldom of Hereford. I do remember me. Henry VI prophecy said that Richmond would be king when he was a peevish little boy. My character was a schizophrenic. He had two personalities. One was where he was perfect, kind, deformed guy, but on the other side, he was this evil, horrible man that killed his brothers, so I really enjoyed playing that part. Richard in the play would do anything to get power. He killed people's relatives and he killed his own relatives, so he was pretty ruthless. Teenagers my age will definitely find it entertaining because of how it's, it has romance and action all in one. I shall marry Warwick's youngest daughter. What though I killed her husband and her father. The readiest way to make the wench amends is to become her husband and her father. Before, I didn't really like Shakespeare plays that much because I find it hard to understand. But once you've been doing it, like, and you've actually had to have a role in it, you, you sort of get to grips with how to learn some of the words and how to sort of figure out for yourself what some of the words mean. Well, when I came here, I found Richard III really, really boring. That's because I didn't understand it. Um, when I acted it out, I quite enjoyed it. I, I did enjoy it. And then um, slowly, slowly I got there and I understood it, which was really good. And now I, I really love Shakespeare plays and um, I read books about it. Villain, set down the course or by St. Paul, I shall make a course of him who disobey. What? Do you tremble? Are you all afraid? Alas, I blame you not, for you are mortal. And mortal eyes cannot endure the devil. Sweet saint, for charity, be not so cursed. Shakespeare plays, I would say, are different to a lot of other plays because it takes a lot out of you. It takes emotion, it boosts your confidence, and, you know, it's, it's, it uses a different language that other plays don't usually use. So if you can seriously just stand up there and shout out a line of a language that you're not usually familiar with, it will, it will boost your confidence to do other things. I can't. You, you, can, you can end up realising some things about yourself and the way you act that you never really realised before. Blush, blush, thou lump of foul deformity. It is thy presence that exhales this blood. Lady, you know no rule for charity. Villain, thou knowest no law of God nor man. Did thou not kill this king? I grant ye a. Dost grant me, hedgehog. Thou mayest be danced for that wicked deed. I think it's a lot better to learn it practically than in a classroom, because I'll be honest, in a classroom, doing it over and over again, just sitting in a classroom, after a while, you just start to switch off. But once you learn how to do it practically, you're going to have to stay focused. You don't really have a choice because you have a role to play and you're just going to have to tap into it and do it. Oh, he was gentle, mild, and virtuous. The better for the king of heaven hath him, for who is fitter for any place than earth. And thou fit for any place but hell. Yes, one place else. Some dungeon. Your bedchamber. It was your beauty that was the cause. The beauty in which haunted me in my sleep to undertake the death of the world just for one hour in your sweet bosom. <laughs> I think everybody wants power. Everyone works the way to get to the top. Even work, you work for your promotion. But it's how you want, how badly you want it. And I think Richard wanted it to a higher extent over the top. So he did anything to get it, and that included killing family members. If thy revengeful heart cannot forgive, I lend thee this sharp pointed sword. Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Henry. But it was thy beauty which provoked me. Nay, now, dispatch, it was I that stabbed your husband. But it was thy heavenly face which set me on. Richard had, had um, killed Lady Anne's husband, which was old 
Queen Margaret's son. And from then, everybody's life got messed up, including Anne. I think Richard's genius, the way he traps Anne by putting in a situation where she has to kill him or marry him. She sort of knew that she was, she was going to give him everything. So, in a sense, she was. I think she was trying to hold herself back, but she knew she couldn't. He was, well, she just fell too deep. Take off the sword again. Or take upon me. Arise, dissembler. I wish I knew that heart. Vouch safe to wear this ring. To take is not to give. Look how my ring encompasses thy finger. Even so, thy breast enclosed upon my poor heart. It's amazing the way Anne falls for Richard, even though her husband's dead body is right behind her, her lover is behind her, and she's already falling for someone else, the one that killed that person. And in front of her face, he admits this, but she still falls for him. Set up the course. He acts like this romantic guy, and she sees that romantic guy, and she thinks that he, that's him, but that's not really him, that's just him playing a part for his evil plan to become king. Uh, for me, personally, playing Lady Anne, I found it very difficult. It's something that I completely disagreed with in myself, personally. So for me to have to try and get that across anyway, putting all my feelings aside, it was a little bit difficult. And in that time, to be honest, if it was me personally, I would have punched Richard, but she didn't. I don't think Anne was convinced by Richard's act, but I think she chose to because she did have another choice. Because her, her, her husband had just died, so now she needed someone else to take care of her. And she just didn't have that power to look after herself in the, in the dangerous position she, that she was in. I think she goes to Richard because she knows that he's trying to get power, so if she does marry him, then she'll be a lady of power as well, and that she, it's something she doesn't want to pass up. Was ever woman in this human wood? Was ever woman in this human one? I'll have her, but I will not keep her long. Upon my life she finds, although I cannot, myself to be a marvellous, proper man. Shine out, fair sun, till I have brought a glass, as I may watch my shadow as it pass. I think it's brilliant the way his personality changes. At the beginning, he's this... He hates himself for his deformity, and in, in that scene with Lady Anne, when she's left the stage, she's telling everyone how much he's a... how he's a marvellous, proper man, and how he's a fantastic person. My lord! What should we do if Lord Hastings not yield to our complot? Chop off his head, man. And look, when I am king, claim thou of me the earldom of Hereford. I think that the other characters at this stage feel a bit more intimidated because they realise that now that if they put a foot wrong, the same thing could happen to them. Uh, Rich is all evil. Even though he tries to disguise it and hide it, he's all evil deep down. Uh, I kind of disagree with that. I don't think he's 100% evil because it's always good in someone and it shows it in the beginning of the play, saying why he's going to do all this stuff, because he has a reason for it. He's not just out of the blue. He's, set, he's doing it because of his own deformity. He has a reason. I pray you all, tell me what they deserve, that you can spy my death with devilish plots of down witchcraft. I say, my lord, they have deserved death. Then be your eyes the witness of their evil. Behold! Mine arm, like a blasted sapling, webbing up! And this, it's Edward's wife, that monstrous witch, that sapling harlot! If they have done this deed, my noble lord. If thou protector of this damned strumpet, talk to me as ifs! Off with his head! See that it is done. I will not dine until I see the same. Um, I think after this scene, everyone starts to fear Richard now because he's shown to everyone else what he can do by having Hastings' head chopped off. The characters get really worried and see that how ruthless he can be and how he can just have someone that's helped him so much just killed like that. Rich's family trusted him, and it shows if someone uh, could kill his own brothers, imagine the people around you, what they could do to you, so you have to be uh, very careful with the people you trust. <laughs> Rich 
pictured his character, no one knew how he was. Not even his own mum could tell that he was an evil, conniving little person. No one knew that until right at the end. Um, I feel sorry for her because everybody else found out how bad Richard was um, and her she, um, old uh, Duchess of York, his own mother, ended up one, being one of the last ones in the whole play to find out, so I think that was kind of sad. Because really, everybody says that a mother knows their child best, but in this instance, she didn't. Definitely feel sorry for Richard, because I think at that moment at time, at the end, when he's face to face and he knows he's going to die, he regrets what he's done. I think his life flashes, flashes before him and he knows that what he did was wrong. He regrets it, but he, doesn't, he can't go back now. Richard! Richmond! I think at the end of the play, Richard is admired by the audience because he knows he's going to die. The prophecy said that Richmond would be king, but instead of running away, being a coward, he stands his ground and fights. What you do to others usually does come back to you, and that's just what he got. So, to be, to be honest, I think that he deserved it because he killed everybody else. I mean, did he honestly think they was just going to get away with it? The day is ours. The bloody dog is dead. Courageous Richmond, well hast thou quit thee. I think Richmond is like the solution to the problem. He comes and he he's the hero to the story against Richard and defeats Richard and then he becomes King Henry the Seventh, who's now the father of King Henry the Eighth and all the other Tudor, great Tudor kings of England. I think Richmond's like the knight in shining armour, the hero of the story. He kills the villain, he gets the girl, he's number one. Oh, now let Richmond and Elizabeth, the true succeeders of each royal house, by God's foreknowledge, conjoin together the white rose and the red. Amen. The kids today, they always want to follow the crowd, they always want to be like their superheroes. And to do that, Richard III, he wants to be that superhero, he wants to be that king. So he kills to get that. And that play shows that even though he killed to get that, even though he's got that, it's still not enough. Richard III, he used to go for power and money, whereas nowadays everybody, like corrupted countries, presidents, prime ministers, um, some who are corrupted are after power and money, and they do kill people nowadays. And they do kill for money, they do kill for power. And children our age, teenagers, can uh, learn from these stuff. And when they grow up, hopefully they should um, understand it more and realise what is going on in the outer world.